You're watching ABC4 News. Welcome back. An American tradition returns to the streets of New York City. The Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade officially kicked off the holiday celebration this morning with the whole lineup of floats, bands, and of course, all those balloons. Yep, thousands of spectators lining the streets to watch the parade on its 40 block journey from Central Park to Herald Square. This year's parade saw the debut of Star Wars sensation Baby Yoda, along with several other popular kid cartoon characters. Organizers saying they worked hard to make this year's parade even bigger than last. So this is our 96th parade and we are super excited because we're coming back bigger than ever. Uh, we are, we've got 16 giant balloons. We've got a full complement of small and mid-sized balloons. Uh, we've got many, many floats. So this is going to be really one for the record books. The largest balloons are about 70 feet long and can have as many as 50 people holding the ropes to ferry them through the streets. And after dinner is done, and of course, the kitchen is clean. A lot of families are resting for Black Friday, but this year they're going to have to wait longer than usual. More and more big box stores are staying closed on Thanksgiving Day with big names like Walmart, Best Buy and Target all cutting back on their hours this year. And while that likely means fewer doorbuster sales, there are still plenty of deals out there. I would focus on the categories that are historically the most deeply discounted over this weekend. So that would be tech, fall fashion, beauty, and small home appliances. If you focus there, you'll do really well. And a recent study found 80% of holiday consumers plan to shop during Black Friday and Cyber Monday weekend. That's about 10% higher from last year. And those shoppers plan to use 50% of their holiday shopping budgets this weekend. As you're, as you're preparing for your big Thanksgiving dinners tonight, our Craig Worth has some old footage to make sure your table manners are proper as well. I love this story. Craig says this is one of the stories people ask him about the most. It's his formal Thanksgiving dinner with his family, and it's worth watching. Oh yeah, Thanksgiving. It was the time as a kid. I went over to my relatives to behave for a grown up dinner. My football helmet was optional. The manners were not optional. You're worried about not doing the right thing. Your table manners. It was one of those someday you will understand deals. You may not care much about table manners now, but when you grow up to be me, then you'll care. Well, now that I have my family, I do understand. And this is my family, Bobby and Edie. You're worried about not doing the right thing, your table manners. You may not care much about table manners now, but when you grow up to be me, then you'll care. Fortunately, there were swell films to teach manners. Know what to do with a napkin. And how to use a spoon in eating soup easily, without noise. To take small mouthfuls, so we never have to talk with food in our mouth. It is good to have learned to chew with lips closed. And know when to take a drink. Yes, make me proud. Know what to do with a napkin. And how to use a spoon in eating soup easily, without noise. To take small mouthfuls, so we never have to talk with food in our mouth. It is good to have learned to chew with lips closed and know when to take a drink. Good table manners keep our meals happy meat. And those who eat with us happy. We are glad to eat neatly without spots. And me? Well, I still hated manners. I went the easy route. With Swanson TV turkey dinners, you just heat and serve, and you serve big and hearty slices of moist, tender Swanson turkey with grand giblet gravy and special cornbread dressing and fluffy whipped sweet potatoes with golden Swanson butter mm. and garden fresh peas with more butter. Mm. Mm. Mother yeah. Murphy, lucky <laughs> me. Well, in truth, I'm a vegetarian, and I had tofu. Craigworth, ABC 4 News.
Time now for Utah's most accurate forecast. Weather rate certified 11 years in a row. All right, we all went the easy route today as well with the Golden Corral spread. Yeah, <laughs> I hope you took some us. notes from those dogs, though. You could mm. learn a thing or two from I, them. I should have saw that before we Small, started. For me, yeah. it's the smaller bites. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a big uh, mouthful eater, I guess. So don't talk to me while I'm eating. Right? Bad <laughs> now <idea>. we know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, folks, a beautiful end to the day. This is a look at sunset, or Sundance, excuse me, of the sunset. Uh, we could use a little bit more snow, of course, at Sundance. They're not opening yet till December 3rd. So we've got a little more time to pack on some of the... Uh, uh, feet, hopefully, of snow as we get closer to uh, opening day. We do have a good storm system on the way we're going to talk about. Uh, a look from Utah Lake off towards the sun going down as well. Sunset has already occurred, but we're still seeing uh, dusk, of course. The so last light, 37 degrees right now in Logan, 39 in Ogden, Salt Lake City, 37 in Provo, and uh, good evening in St. George, 55 degrees. Headlines calling for, again, continued quiet weather for your turkey day. Calm Thanksgiving. We've had uh, just sunny skies and a little bit of haze. More hazy sunshine expected for tomorrow. Uh, there is a weak disturbance that's going to brush by northern Utah on Saturday. Might help mix out some of the air, so we could continue to see uh, decent air quality. But we've got a bigger storm system lined up for next week. It looks like Monday into Tuesday. Should see a, a good chance of some active weather. So, satellite and radar showing we do have quite a bit of moisture across the uh, south uh, over uh, portions of the southeast, moving with uh, some showers as you head north as well. So travel wise could have some impacts if you're heading out and about into tomorrow as the storm system continues to impact the south. Some snow showers in New Mexico, high pressure across the west, so pretty quiet conditions there. Travel impacts expected to be moderate on Friday, again, mainly in the southern and central portion of the U.S., the far northeast as well. If you're headed towards British Columbia at all, there's some moderate impact to travel there as some systems are moving through. Let's kind of walk you through the long range forecast. So high pressure is in place. Here's this weak system that's brushing by on Saturday. Some of the northern mountain areas might see a half of an inch or less. Nothing significant on Saturday. But then here comes another trough. This area of low pressure is expected to be here sometime on Monday, uh, Monday evening, expecting some rain showers in the valley initially over to snow fairly quickly Monday afternoon into Tuesday. Continue to see some of those impacts and colder air moving in behind it. And we could continue to see an active trend with possibly another system lined up Wednesday into Thursday. So chances of moisture, yeah, a good 70% chance of some showers on Monday, 40% Tuesday continues to wane into Wednesday. But then we could see those pick back up again into Thursday. So nice to see an active weather pattern out there. Models, early models are hinting at maybe a foot of good snow in the mountain areas for a ski resort. So regional forecast tonight into tomorrow, plan on 20s and teens across much of the northern and central part of the state tonight. Tomorrow we're back in the 40s. Should be about 45 in Salt Lake, 49 in Price, St. George 57, Lake Powell 48 degrees. Looking at uh, St. George 57 to 58 today, tomorrow. 56 on Sunday. Slight chance of moisture late Monday into Tuesday before they clear out, but breezy and 46 on Tuesday, so much cooler. About 49 on uh, Wednesday, Thursday 52. Again, so nice weather if you're heading out shopping at all tomorrow. No weather going to hold you back uh, from getting out on the roads or getting to the stores that you want to get to as well. Wasatch Front, hazy sunshine, 45, 44 on Saturday. Slight chance we'll throw that in. Otherwise, mid 40s on Sunday. Rain over to snow Monday with a high of 40 Monday, but quickly dropping. In fact, look at that overnight low, just 24 into Tuesday morning. Snow showers are expected. We could see accumulating snow in the valleys as well. Breezy winds on Tuesday. 37 on Wednesday and 41 on Thursday with some clouds. Again, we'll be tracking possibly another disturbance into Thursday. So, yeah, pretty quiet overall, though, for folks who are heading out traveling for the long holiday weekend. Back to you guys. All right, sounds good. Let's check in with Dana in sports. And, Danny, you're keeping an eye on another holiday tradition tonight. Yeah, you can't have Thanksgiving without football. It's in the Constitution or something, right? I don't know, I wasn't good at history. But I do know that former BYU star Jamal Williams has been in feast mode all season long. Williams leads the entire NFL in touchdown score. That's just incredible. Williams in the Detroit Lions taking on the Buffalo Bills, and this game was no turkey. It was a good one. Detroit strikes first as Williams takes it in from two yards out. That's his 13th touchdown of the year, more than any other player, running back or receiver. Lions up 19-14 in the fourth, looking to pull off the upset, but Josh Allen hits Stephon Diggs. Buffalo back on top. 28 seconds left. Detroit down three. Michael Badgley from 51 yards out sneaks it in. We're tied at 25. 23 seconds left. That's enough time for Josh Allen and the Bills. Hits Stephon Diggs over the middle for a 36-yard pickup. 
And a couple plays later, it's Tyler Bass from 45 yards out in the win. And he drills it. The final score, 28-25. Buffalo improves to 8-3 on the year. The Utah Jazz have been struggling of late, losing five of their last seven. But one guy who's been pretty hot is Malik Beasley. What a spark off the bench he has been for the Jazz. Last night against Detroit, Beasley made eight three-pointers, led the team in scoring with 29 points. In three of his last four games, Beasley has scored at least 27. This month, he's shooting 45% from three-point range. But after the game, he was just upset that the Jazz couldn't hold on to a lead down the stretch. Honestly, it just sucks. You know, I think we're way better team than them. And uh, tonight, they were better than us. They wanted it more. And, uh, I feel like this is the most important game of the year just because of the loss in L.A. and then with the schedule we have coming up, you know, this is a must win for us. And uh, we didn't execute, we didn't get back in the defense, and, you know, that's been a problem. Yeah, the defense has been a problem, but Beasley has, and he's been better than advertised since coming over in that Rudy Gobert trade. The Jazz are back on the road tomorrow night against the defending champion Golden State Warriors. That should be a pretty good test for the Jazz. Yeah, Clarkson was the spark off the bench last year. Now it's Beasley, right? He was. All right, thanks so much. All right, well, coming up, what does a lemur eat for Thanksgiving? We're going to show you the zoo that went all out to give these little critters a proper turkey day.